Book of Boba Fett, one of the most recent additions to the seemingly endless slew of Star Wars shows on Disney+, Plus, is set between the events of Return of the Jedi and The Mandalorian. The series follows the bounty hunter Boba Fett as he navigates the dangerous criminal underworld on Tatooine. With a focus on character development and moral complexity, the show delves into the motivations and backstory of its titular character, revealing a nuanced and multifaceted individual who is both ruthless and vulnerable. The supporting cast, including Fett's loyal companion Fennec Shand and his rival, sometimes ally bounty hunter Din Yaren, add depth and richness to the story, as their own agendas and conflicts intersect with Fett's. The series received mixed reviews from fans, with particular criticism for the series being seemingly hijacked by the main character of The Mandalorian for two episodes, with Boba Fett himself being relegated to a guest star in his own show. Hey everyone, I'm Brendan Kelleher. Ever since Disney acquired the rights to the Star Wars franchise, it was clear that they were going to milk this cash cow for all it's worth. With at the time of this recording, five theatrical movies, four live action TV series, and several animated shows being released by the company. I'm not going to get into the quality of all these movies and shows. Suffice to say, the reception has been met with both joy and outright hatred. Ray The idea of a Boba Fett show sounded like a good idea to me. Fett has been a cult favourite since his first appearance in The Empire Strikes Back in 1980. Okay, okay, technically he first appeared in animated form in the Star Wars Holiday Special, which everyone involved with would rather you forget actually exists. Do you remember making this Christmas special? I think it was 1978. <laughs> no, you don't remember it? You have no memory of this incident. It's interesting how the popularity of this character grew over the years, since he was introduced as just another of a bunch of bounty hunters, which Darth Vader employed to capture Han Solo and Princess Leia, to draw his son Luke Skywalker into a trap. Both George Lucas and Empire director Irvin Kirshner said in various interviews that the character was conceived as basically being Clint Eastwood's character from the Spaghetti Western trilogy, in a high-tech suit of armour. The design of that armour as well as the character's mysterious persona, only added to his appeal to fans. The character made further appearances in comic books, video games, and was even retroactively given a more important significance in the Star Wars prequel trilogy, which depicted that Fett was an unaltered clone of his father Jango Fett, who was himself the template for the army that fought in the Republic Clone Wars against the Separate Alliance. I myself found the show to be disappointing to say the least, Fett spends the entire show on Tatooine declaring himself as a crime lord. This move seemed completely out of character for him. It made no sense that he would do this, as he was just a bounty hunter for hire. They tried to justify this in the first few episodes by having him basically go reenacting the events of the Kevin Costner movie Dances with Wolves and depict him having a life-changing experience with the Sand People. You might remember them, the charming misunderstood folk who attacked Luke Skywalker and kidnapped and killed his grandmother. The show's structure was also very disjointed, with Fett's experience with the Sand People being depicted through several flashbacks while he was recovering in a Bacta tank. What was really weird was the fact that after four episodes, the show was taken over by the Mandalorian, which follows his storyline for two episodes. Not only does it interrupt the plot of what was supposed to be a Boba Fett show, but undoes the events of the terrific season two finale of The Mandalorian which featured a fantastic appearance by Luke Skywalker as he took custody of Grogu. By the time they introduced the fan favourite character Cad Bane, Fett's rival from the Clone Wars animated series, it was too little too late. Such an important character's appearance isn't given the proper build-up. Even worse is the fact that they kill him off. And so that was that. After the similarly disappointing Obi-Wan Kenobi series was released, filmmaker Kai Patterson took it upon himself to do a fan edit and compressed all six episodes into a full-length two and a half hour movie. I reviewed this cut some time ago, and he did a fantastic job fixing pacing problems, getting rid of unnecessary scenes and cringeworthy moments. Most importantly, he kept the focus of the story on the title character himself, and not only reduced the presence of the almost completely redundant character Reva, which threatened to take over the show, but had the good sense to depict the character being killed off by Darth Vader, at the appropriate point in the story. Patterson then turned his attention to the book of Boba Fett. He teamed up with Pentex Productions, who produced their own cut of Kenobi by the way, 
and split the series into two feature-length movies, Kill Bill style. Patterson edited part one, which he retitled Without a Tribe, and Pentex handled part two, retitled In the Name of Honor. While Kenobi was originally envisioned as a movie before being turned into a show, re-editing it was relatively straightforward. Boba Fett was a more difficult task, since this story is so intertwined with the events of The Mandalorian. While Mando's presence in two episodes of Boba Fett seemed intrusive, Patterson, working with what he's been given, does the best job he can in making Din Yarn a key character in what is essentially a Boba Fett story. Since Fett was a key character in The Mandalorian, Patterson includes a significant amount of footage from several episodes of that show. While the first few episodes of Book of Boba depicts Fett's experiences with the Sand People via flashbacks, Patterson's recut tells the story in a more linear, chronological fashion. While the overall story of Book of Boba Fett is inherently flawed, by interweaving highlights from several key episodes of The Mandalorian throughout this movie, it's not such a weird tonal and story shift when Mando shows up for the final battle in Volume 2. Between the two cuts, I think Volume 1 comes off the best, as Patterson includes several of the best episodes of The Mandalorian, such as Season 1's The Gunslinger, which introduces Fett's right-hand woman Fennec Shand, and Season 2's The Marshal, which not only introduces Cobb Vanth, but also plays a key part in Boba Fett getting his armor back. In this way, by interspersing these key Mando episode highlights into the film as a running side plot, Boba Fett's story takes center stage, laying the groundwork for the eventual meeting between these two characters. Patterson also, quite ingeniously, skims through important Mandalorian episodes, such as Season 2's The Jedi, which introduces Ahsoka Tano, by conveying important information she had for Mando through a voiceover as Mando flies to the planet where he and Fett have their first confrontation. This is also a great way for fans to enjoy the best parts of the Mandalorian story without having to go through all the filler standalone episodes of that series. The only downside to this approach is that by the end of Volume 1, when Fett and Mando team up to rescue Grogu and Moff Gideon and his army of dark troopers, Fett has relegated to being more like a guest star in his own movie just like he was for two episodes of his own show. The finale of Volume 1 is largely made up of the Season 2 finale of Mandalorian, which, don't get me wrong, is absolutely fantastic, as Luke Skywalker shows up to save everyone. By the way, the de-aging effect for young Luke Skywalker in this movie is significantly better than the version seen in the actual show. Overall, Book of Boba Fett Volume 1, Without a Tribe, is well worth a watch for fans of both Boba Fett and Mando. Volume 2, which was edited by Pentex, is to a significant degree a step down in quality from Volume 1. This is to be expected, as this movie consists of footage solely from the actual Book of Boba Fett show, but Pentex's recut makes it a much more worthwhile watch than what was presented on Disney+. The story picks up with Boba Fett and Fennec Shand, now after taking control of the late Jabba the Hutt's crime operation on Tatooine. In contrast to his predecessors, Fett wants to rule with respect, not fear. This is one of the more controversial aspects of the show for fans. Fett was depicted as a ruthless bounty hunter in the movies, and his conversion to be more of a good guy was disappointing for those expecting a more violent, more Punisher-esque show based around the character. When you watch the story as depicted in these two movies, however, the change in Fett's character is more palatable after having seen him bond with the Tuscans in Volume 1. Telling the story in a chronological order was a smart idea, as in the original show, these events were shown during seemingly endless flashbacks while Boba was recovering the back to tank. One of the more laughable aspects of Book of Boba Fett were the Mod Squad gang that Fett employs to work for him. These were a gang of misfits who jetted about in these overly colourful, shall we say, speeder bikes that looked like something out of a Power Rangers cartoon. In this cut, New VFX have been used to desaturate the colour of these bikes and makes them less distracting, which was a neat touch I thought. A significant amount of the Mando episodes of Book of Boba Fett are used in this new cut, but thanks to the presence of Mando in Volume 1, his inclusion seems more natural here. However, unlike Volume 1, there are some odd editing choices Pentex makes in this new cut. A scene where an assassination attempt on Fett and Shand is shortened, as is a speeder chase with the Mod Gang. However, while a lot of unnecessary material from the Mando episodes is wisely left out here, Pentex includes an utterly pointless fight scene between Mando and Paz Vizsla, 
which while important in the context of Mendo's story on his own show, doesn't further the plot of Book of Boba Fett at all, just like it didn't in the original version of the show on Disney+. On the other hand, Pentex deletes a pretty good fight scene with Fennec Shand on Tatooine, which I missed in this new cut. And despite Boba's story being told in chronological fashion, there is a weird use of a flashback to depict the demise of Cobb Vanth at the hands, or should I say gun, of Cad Bane. This really should not have been a flashback, and just shown in chronological order. Speak of Cad Bane, his presence in this new cut is like the original version of the show, coming way too late in the story to have significant impact. Cad Bane is a fan favourite character from the Clone Wars animated series, and while it's great to see him make his live action debut here, his entrance into the story on the show, and subsequently this new cut, comes way too late to convey the bitter history between him and Boba Fett. It makes the final confrontation between the two characters not have the significant amount of drama it should have. Also, Ed Bane is way too good a character to kill off this quickly. If Boba Fett was inspired by Clint Eastwood as the man with no name, Bane was clearly inspired by Lee Van Cleef from the same series of films. You can clearly see the resemblance. Overall, The Book of Boba Fett Volumes 1 and 2 is a significant step up in quality from the series that was presented on Disney+. While the story is inherently flawed, and not the more Punisher-esque Boba Fett plot fans would have preferred to see, this is the best way to experience this series. Both cuts eliminate pointless scenes and moments, tightens the film's focus on the lead character, improves crucial VFX shots, and is an overall more enjoyable experience for fans of the franchise. If you were disappointed with the original series, it's well worth giving it another chance with these two movies. Both cuts are available on Kai Patterson and Pentex's websites. I'll leave links in the description below. They do ask that you be a current Disney Plus subscriber if you're going to watch them though. We can criticize Disney all we want for their overall handling of the Star Wars franchise, but let's not support piracy either. As for the future, Kai Patterson has announced that he's going to be turning the Ahsoka series into a movie. Speak as someone who couldn't finish the first episode, I'm really looking forward to seeing him work his magic on that one. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed, then please give it a like. Consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Share with your friends, click the bell for notifications, and let me know in the comments what did you think of the book of Boba Fett. Most importantly, I hope you all look after yourselves, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye for now.